Welcome. Diabetes Sisters understands that our needs for education and encouragement continue as we shelter in place during this pandemic. We are grateful to the following sponsors committed as of June 1st, 2020 for supporting us in providing this session. Janssen, Merck, and Noah Nordisk. Hi, my name is Vandana Shet. I'm a registered dietitian nutritionist and a certified diabetes care and education specialist based in Los Angeles. I'm honored to present today on behalf of Diabetes Sisters, and I will be sharing tips on food, nutrition, and cooking, along with dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Talking about the COVID-19 pandemic, we've all become familiar with terms such as social distancing, quarantine, pantry staples, pandemic, community spread, flattening the curve, and increasingly, of course, shelter in place. Now, the global COVID-19 pandemic continues to create worldwide challenges, unlike any we've ever experienced. So in today's presentation, I hope to go over the pandemic and our current situation, also talk about healthy eating guidelines to help us maintain our overall health and quality of life. And if you have prediabetes or diabetes to help you manage and control your blood sugars appropriately, I'd like to go over some tips for preparing meals with pantry ingredients and staples, also suggestions for the summer and possibly some socializing as well. So, with the new normal, it feels like everything is canceled. Many of us are facing a new reality, a new situation where you might be working from home. You have young kids at home. Many of the schools were, you know, going online and often parents became homeschool teachers. All their after school activities were canceled. And so you are now in charge of keeping your children active and busy while also managing your professional life. The lines between professional and personal lives have started merging and blending. And so how can you handle the situation? Not only is it challenging just to have balance, but also in terms of maintaining your overall health and wellness goals. I'm here to tell you that sheltering at home doesn't mean that it's gonna derail all your plans for your activity, for your food choices, you can keep your intentions and you can maintain your health. How do we do that? We do that by a few simple things in place. Number one, it's important to create a routine. Days seem to flow into each other. Before the pandemic, we did have more of a structure in our lives. We had weekdays, we had weekends, and they were somewhat different in terms of how we did things. But unfortunately now, weekdays and weekends seem to blur together. It's hard to decide what day of the week it is. Sometimes it's even hard to remember what month it is. So having some kind of structure and routine is important. Let's talk about movement, physical activity. If you're someone who enjoyed going to the gym, many of the gyms are closed. And if they are opening up, there are stricter guidelines of how you can go and work out. But that doesn't mean you have to give up movement. Physical activity can be anything that gives you joy, that gets you moving. Something as simple as a walk in your neighborhood can be really good for you. And if you have kids, to take them on a walk. You're getting fresh air, you're moving yourself, and it's a good thing. It can naturally bring your blood sugars down. So try to do a walk after you eat. When it comes to exercise besides walking, what you could do is if you like dancing, why not put on some music at home and have a dance party? Why not investigate other classes? There are so many options available online. You could try yoga, you could try Zumba. It just depends on what is exciting and fun for you and what is something you can do consistently. That's the key. Third tip, let's start our day off with a good breakfast because breakfast does set us up for success. 
in terms of our food choices, in terms of our energy level, and how we function throughout the day. What can be a good breakfast? Something that gives us whole grains, some carbs for that quick burst of energy, some protein, either nut butters, or it could be eggs, or it could be paneer, and try and have some fiber-rich foods. So maybe a bowl of berries like raspberries or blackberries or blueberries, or you could have some sauteed vegetables and make it like an egg scramble. You can come up with all kinds of ideas, whatever is quick and convenient and that's doable. Please make sure you get some breakfast in, that's the key. Now let's talk about snacking. Now with the way life is, again, all our meals are sort of fluid. We often seem to just go in, we have easy access to the pantry and the fridge. So we might be getting in the habit of opening things up and just eating even if we're not hungry. So it's important to pay attention to when you snack and ideally plan your snack. A snack could be as simple as maybe a bowl of fruit like these blueberries and you could pair it with some nuts. And right there you have a perfect combination. You have something sweet that's delicious, that has antioxidants and fiber and you have some heart healthy fats and did you know that pistachios also are actually an excellent source of plant protein? So this would be a great pairing. Another option is say you felt like something salty. You could have maybe some baked tortilla chips and have that with a guacamole. And that would be a nice option. Let's talk about another snack that you could put together. Maybe a homemade trail mix. If you like Indian spices, you could add some cumin and chili and uh, Indian masalas to your nuts and then add a little bit of some whole grain cereal and you have a nice trail mix that's homemade but that's got the right textures, the right spices and not going over in terms of your blood sugars. Next tip, I'd like you to get in touch with your hunger. As we talked about the structure, not only is it important to plan your meals and snacks, it's also important to pay attention to your hunger and satiety. Often we're eating when we're not hungry. So when you are thinking about something, it's important to actually check in with yourself. Ask yourself, are you truly hungry? And if so, what is it that you crave? What is it that you want? And let's make sure you're mindful, you're in the moment when you're eating rather than distracted and watching TV or doing something else where you're not paying attention to the food. So check in with yourself, pay attention when you're hungry and be mindful when you're eating. Okay, two more tips. One is if you do drink alcoholic beverages, do manage your alcohol consumption because um, there are limitations. The general recommendation is for a woman to have no more than one alcoholic beverage per day. And for men, the recommendation is no more than two alcoholic beverages per day. So keep that in mind, be mindful. If you are someone who enjoys having an alcoholic beverage, make sure you actually measure it out and enjoy the right amount and then move on and have some sparkling water or regular water or other, other beverages, okay? And finally, I wanna to touch on sleep. Sleep is a big part of this equation. With the high levels of anxiety and stress we're experiencing, our wake up and bedtimes are all messed up as well. So please try and build some good sleep habits because that can affect your hunger level, that can affect your blood sugars as well. Now, is there a concern about COVID-19 and people with diabetes? Actually, people with diabetes aren't at higher risk for COVID-19. What we know is that people with diabetes, if they contract COVID-19, they're at a higher risk for complications. What you can do is definitely follow the safety precautions set aside by the CDC and depending on your local government as far as restrictions go, as far as what, um, you know, wearing the mask before you head out, limiting your interaction with large groups of people, trying to use soap and water, washing your hands more frequently, using a sanitizer. Those precautions are in place and for a reason and please make sure you do follow those. It's also important to keep your blood sugar on target because of the high levels of anxiety and stress, because our meals and snacks are a little more fluid, it can affect your blood sugars. So check in, make sure you check your blood sugars regularly and keep them on track. 
Another thing to keep in mind is make sure you have all your supplies on hand. So your testing strips, your insulin, if you take it, or your medications, make sure you have plenty of supplies. And if you are concerned, definitely reach out to your healthcare team because they are there to support you. And many physician practices offer telehealth options, so you don't have to go in to see them. You could do a virtual appointment as well. Take advantage of that. I also want to make sure that you touch on your emotions because we are all feeling overwhelmed. You might be feeling anxious. You might be feeling less productive. You might be bored. And so give yourself permission to share your feelings, even if you can't do in-person um, sessions or get togethers with family and friends. There are so many other platforms you can connect with family and friends virtually. Pick up the phone, talk to someone so that you get that emotional support. And there are resources out there, so do reach out to them. Let's talk about stocking our kitchens. So I remember in the second week of March when we went into lockdown, I'm in LA and we went into lockdown trying to stock up my kitchen, going into the grocery store and seeing all these shelves that were empty was a little scary. Even though the goal is not to stockpile and over, you know, stock your kitchen so that other people don't have food, it's important to recognize that it's important to stock your kitchen with at least the basics to keep you sustained in case you can't leave the house more often. The reality is now we, we have access to a lot more produce and a lot more foods. We know that grocery stores are open and they're keeping them well stocked. We also know there are many other avenues for getting our groceries. You can do online options as well. Regardless of how you get your groceries, you might be choosing to minimize your trips to the grocery store. And I get that, and that's good. So when you do go to the grocery store, start picking things that have a longer shelf life, that will last longer, that you can come up with multiple recipes from the same ingredients so you're not wasting foods as well. Some suggestions I have are when you get food, let's go with more frozen options. So frozen vegetables are a great option to keep if you have freezer space in your house because produce is picked at its peak ripeness and then packed right away within hours. So all the nutrition is locked in and there's usually nothing added to that produce. So definitely encourage you to stock up on frozen produce like frozen spinach, frozen chopped vegetables, bell peppers. There are all kinds of frozen cauliflower. So there's lots of options. The other thing I'd like to encourage you to have is canned goods on hand. Because with canned goods, often I hear clients concerned about the sodium and that it may not be as nutritious. We can always rinse things out to get rid of some of that sodium, but they are still a very good way of getting nutrients in and they simplify the cooking process. So if you can, I suggest you have some canned products as well. When it comes to fresh produce, some produce will go in, um, will be more fragile, so it'll go bad pretty fast. That would be like spinach or arugula or different types of lettuce, Swiss chard, some fresh herbs. So if these are things you pick, I encourage you to plan meals around them so you use them right away and they don't go to waste. The sturdier greens I suggest you stock up on are kale, Swiss chard, collard greens, parsley, um, romaine lettuce will last longer compared to the leafy lettuce like green leaf and red leaf. Uh, when it comes to vegetables like green beans, broccoli, zucchini, which is in season right now, bell peppers, cucumbers, eggplants, mushrooms, some of these tend to be more delicate so when you pick them up, make sure you use them faster compared to sturdier vegetables like cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, um, celery, if you like Napa cabbage, radishes like daikon radishes. Those tend to be sturdy. They will last a much longer time. They have a better shelf life in your fridge. Um, other vegetables that are sturdy are red and green cabbage, winter squash, and carrots and beets and daikon I already mentioned onions, garlic, those are things you want to keep stocked up. So let's talk about food groups. So again, just because we're in a pandemic doesn't mean we give up on our overall healthy eating behaviors. We might have to tweak 
some of the types of foods we put on our plate based on what's available and convenience, but we still want to make sure we get a variety of food groups in. So I always encourage having some carbohydrates, some protein, some heart healthy fats, and colorful fruits and vegetables. And the balance of these foods will differ depending on your unique needs. Each person is different, but in general, try to get a variety of foods into your system. So what are the effects of food on our blood sugars? So we need all three macronutrients, carbohydrates, protein, and fats in our day. And they all have a different effect on our blood sugar. When we have carbs, they are our go-to source of quick energy. So these foods include roti, chapati, if you like idli or dosa, um, if you have, um, let's see, what else? Poha, those would be your Indian starchy carb-rich foods. It would also be rice, it would be pasta, it would be bread, it could be cereal. When you have any of these, try to choose high fiber whole grain options so that they don't spike our blood sugar as quickly as something that doesn't have fiber. When it comes to protein, this does play an important role in our body. It gives us a little bit of a gentle rise in blood sugar rather than a peak and crash like carbs would. And so include these in your meals. If you eat proteins such as eggs, animal proteins like fish, meat, chicken, those would be your protein sources. If you're plant-based, tofu, cheese would be your protein sources. I did not forget, beans and lentils are a phenomenal source of protein. They're also great sources of fiber, but they're also starchy, so they give us some carbs. So if you were having a traditional Indian meal and you were having, say, chana or rajma or dal, be mindful of your portions of the rice or chapati that comes with that because they both will cause a slight blood sugar rise, okay? When it comes to fat, we do need some fat in our diet, some heart healthy fats, they're good for us. What are heart healthy fats? Nuts and seeds, plant-based oils like extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, canola oil, those would be your good choices. Um, try to choose healthy fats because again, and when you're cooking, how much should you use? I usually tell my clients about one teaspoon of oil per person eating that dish would be a good barometer of how much oil to use. A simple way of remembering what are appropriate portions would be, imagine a thali or a plate and fill half your plate with colorful vegetables and fruits, preferably more vegetables than fruits, and then fill one fourth with your roti or rice or paratha and one fourth with your, uh, with your protein. Could be your chana, could be your dal, or if you had chicken or fish or turkey, that would go in there. So an example would be something like this. Right here, I have a tortilla, whole grain tortilla or a roti. I have some beans, I have some colorful vegetables, and I have some fruit. And if you're trying to be mindful of your carb portions, I would say just stretch out the vegetables here and you can have fruit later as a snack with some nuts or just by itself as a snack, okay? Now that we've talked about healthy guidelines, we've talked about the COVID restrictions, we, let's talk about how can you prepare meals from your pantry staples, things you already have on hand so you don't have to go multiple times to the grocery store. So if you're like me, most likely you already have a pantry that's well stocked with essentials. You most likely have dried beans and lentils like dals and rajma and chana and black eyed peas. That's great. You can soak them and cook them up in your pressure cooker and you have a great source of protein, carbohydrates, and some fiber. Another thing that I'm sure you have is some whole grain flour is um, atta that you can use to make chapati and roti. You most likely also have masalas, a lot of spices. So those would be great to keep on hand because they will add flavor to your meals. I also suggest you have canned beans and lentils because again, just like I mentioned earlier, while you can take the time to use your Instant Pot or your pressure cooker, sometimes it's just so convenient to pop open a can, rinse it out and cook something faster. So it might be a good option to keep those on hand. I always have tomato sauce or chopped tomato cans 
because they can literally make food taste better. They add a lot of lycopene, some good nutrients, and are an easy way of adding more flavor to your dishes. Also suggest you have some other whole grains like brown rice, quinoa, oats, barley, millets. You might have some millets like ragi or bajra. Those would be great to keep on hand. And um, let's again revisit the fruits and vegetables. So it doesn't have to be fresh. You could use frozen, you could use canned. The key is to enjoy them, get that variety into your diet. So how are we gonna put these into meal ideas? Let's talk about a few meal ideas. So I have about five or six um, ideas for you. The first one is if you had cauliflower on hand, I would say, how about we saute some cauliflower with a little cumin, olive oil, and some Indian spices. Within a few minutes, you'll have a nice side dish of cauliflower. The next thing would be adding some protein. So if you're a vegetarian, I would say maybe open up a can of chana, saute some onions, some tomato sauce, add Indian spices like cumin, coriander, garam masala, add your chana, let it simmer, and right there you have chana, you have cauliflower. And to round out the meal, you could have a whole wheat tortilla or chapati or roti, or even a little bit of rice. Right there, within 30 minutes with staples that you have on hand, the cauliflower could be fresh or it could be a frozen bag of cauliflower florets. So bring that together, that's one. Second idea, if you like beans, I love making a vegetarian chili. All you do is I take um, a few different varieties of beans like garbanzo, black beans, chickpeas, your choice. Saute them in a little onions, some I add tomatoes again, and then I add spices like cumin. I throw the beans in, and that's the simple chili. Now, if you wanted vegetables in there, you could add zucchini, you could add um, bell peppers, you could add carrots. Be creative. You could also have a side salad with the vegetarian chili. That would be a nice option. Let's talk about the third idea. This is a sprouted mung salad. Have you ever sprouted beans? It's actually really easy if you haven't. And if you have kids, they might find this to be a fun project. So take your beans, soak them, drain the water, and then allow them to germinate or sprout over 24 hours in a cool, dark place. And soon you'll start seeing these sprouted beans. They are an excellent source of nutrition. And all you do is either lightly cook them in some water, or you can eat them raw add a whole bunch of vegetables like chopped onions, cucumbers, tomatoes, cilantro, maybe some shredded cabbage, squeeze a little lime, some salt and cumin. Right there you have a delicious bowl of mung salad, sprouted mung salad. Um, you could enjoy it as is, or if you feel like it, you could drizzle some chutney, some green chutney you might have, and maybe a dollop of Greek yogurt. It tastes delicious. How about um, using your basin or your chickpea flour and making like pudla or chilla with that? It's basically a crepe that you make with chickpea flour and then you could have it either plain or you could have it with the side of some sauteed greens and maybe a little Greek yogurt if you wanted to. Right there you've got flavors that are perfect and it's a healthy plate and it comes together fairly quickly. A couple other ideas I have for you are um, Maybe pao bhaji, if you like pao bhaji. Pao bhaji is a street food for those who don't know it. And it's made with uh, mainly potatoes and onions and tomatoes. But what I like to do is use frozen vegetables. So I use frozen riced cauliflower. I use um, some, like one or two potatoes and I add some onions, tomatoes, some spices. And it's almost like a sloppy joe. It's gooey, it's tasty, it's spicy, and you can have it with a whole grain toast or bun. That'll be a delicious meal. And the last idea I have for you is like an Asian inspired meal. So you could do a stir fry. So all you would need is, again, feel free to use frozen vegetables. It's okay. But if you have on hand fresh vegetables, go for it. You could use any vegetables you have on hand. I usually use onions, ginger, garlic, I use um, shredded cabbage, I use broccoli, mushrooms, peppers, um, and just saute this five, 10 minutes in a nice heated wok. And then you could add some nuts to it, either peanuts or cashews for a little extra crunch. 
For seasoning, I use some soy sauce or chili sauce if you like it spicy. And then add this to already cooked quinoa or brown rice. And for additional protein, you could either add some tofu to this or have a side of edamame, or you could add some chicken or eggs if you eat those, and right there you have a meal. So those are a few simple, easy ideas from things you most likely have on hand in your pantry, in your freezer, in your refrigerator. Now let's talk about mindless munching, because this is a concern, right? With our fluid schedules, with um, easy access to food, often I have calls from my clients in my practice um, wondering why they have this urge, this desire to constantly keep eating. And so we do a few different things to address this. Number one, I ask them to check in with themselves. Check in and see if they're actually hungry. Because most likely, maybe they were so busy doing things that they skipped a meal, and so they are starving. And by the time they're starving, they're grabbing whatever is easily available. So check in with yourself if you're hungry. And if so, ask yourself, when did I last eat? Did I eat regularly? And then also start maybe keeping a food journal. You can use apps. There are quite a few apps in the, in the app store. So there's MyFitnessPal, there's Calorie Counter, there's so many. So pick an app that you like, or if you like the traditional food journal method, just jot down every time you eat or drink anything, write it down and see if there's a pattern, see if you're eating regularly, okay? Another suggestion I have is to plan your meals and snacks in advance so that you're not suddenly starving and grabbing whatever is around. If you planned your timing of meals and your snacks, that is going to keep you more consistent. Your energy level is going to feel good. Your blood sugar is going to be good. So that might be something to do. Another tip is hydration. Often we don't drink enough water throughout the day. So drink plenty of water. Water is your best source of hydration. Either walk around with a water bottle or however you choose, make sure you're drinking some water throughout the day. And last suggestion for minimizing mindless munching is to minimize distractions. So when you're choosing to eat, try to enjoy, try to set it on a table, sit down, pull up a chair, eat at the table, and really take your time to savor the food that you put together rather than sitting in front of the TV or being on your phone and being distracted when you eat. You don't get that satisfaction. Moving on to the summer. So obviously, we would have all loved to have gone out and had picnics and gone to the beach and done fun things this summer. But it looks like with the spiking numbers of COVID, unfortunately, we'll need to continue to practice safety measures such as wearing our masks, maintaining social distance, minimizing going out into large crowds. So what does this mean? How does this translate to what your summer looks like? What if you felt the need and desire to have people over? First, I suggest if you do any social gatherings at home that you try to do it outdoors. Second, let's make sure anyone coming to your home is not sick, does not have a fever, has not had a cold or cough, or travel internationally to certain countries. There's a list you can look up. But I would say those would be the first few concerns. Third, of course, minimize the number of people you're having over. Try to keep it to a small enough number where you can maintain social distance, you can sit far apart. Avoid shaking hands, avoid hugging your family and friends, unfortunately, just so that everyone is safe. Now let's talk about some things you could do at home. Besides that, you could keep a sanitizer on hand that's easily available for anyone entering and are able to use it, especially before they eat. That would be a good thing to have on hand. Second, consider identifying and selecting someone who's in charge of serving the food. It could be you, it could be one of your family members. This way you're minimizing different people handling the serving utensils. Three, Try to serve food individually rather than as a buffet so that everyone has pre-portioned plates already there or appetizer plates and entree plates. This simplifies um, the eating experience as well as minimizes, again, sharing utensils, passing things around the table. If you're concerned about food wastage because you've already pre-portioned servings, 
offer to go containers so that anyone who is full and wants to take some food home, they can just take it off rather than, you know, you serving and then worrying about the food wastage. So these are all some tips and strategies that I use personally and professionally that I'm glad to have shared with you. The virus is creating new ways for everyone to think on how to keep ourselves, our family and friends safe. We are in uncharted territory and we will all learn together. I wish you continued good health, stay positive, stay safe and take care. So as a bonus, I'd like to offer you a free handy list. This is something I created for my clients and it's a diabetes friendly grocery shopping list that I'm happy to send to you. All you need to do is send me an email. My email address is nutritioneducator at gmail.com and put the word free or diabetes friendly list and I will send it to you. And I love connecting with people all over the world. I am active on social media. So if you would like to, I would love to hear from you. So connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And finally, Diabetes Sisters appreciates its sponsors, Janssen, Merck, and Noah Nordis for providing funding for this session. We wish you continued health and safety, and we'll see you at your next session. Stay well. Namaste.